this is NDTV and you're watching Classics. Hello and welcome on board a journey like never before brought to you by Fly King Fisher. Well on this show we are speaking to New India's young path breakers who are redefining their genre of work be it sports, business, politics and entertainment. Well they are India's young icons. You'll see them here, experience them here like never before. Well, let's see who's checking in with us today on this very special journey. A former actress and an eminent theatre personality. When you talk of Prithvi Theatre, you know who I'm talking about. Sanjana Kapoor. Sanjana, many thanks for joining us on this show. It's a pleasure Thank to have you. you on board. Thank you. You're extremely busy shuttling between Delhi and Mumbai. That's right. <laughs> Completely. And my time in Bombay is really, really critical. But it's good to be here. It's critical because you've been spending the last few years actually doing a lot for Prithvi Theatre. You've been saying that, you know, the last six to eight years have been really crucial for you. Yeah, after, well, from working very much alone and isolated uh, with a team being pulled together for various things, suddenly now uh, one has been able to move into another sort of gear where one moves with with a team and that is truly fantastic and that has been recent developments. So the small steps have been taken. Tiny, tiny <laughs> steps. Well, raising funds has always been a problem. It's been a huge problem, um, the lack of sponsors, uh, and you're trying to add value to Prithvi. How does one add value to theater? Well, I think we've always taken our role as a catalyst uh, very, very seriously. We're not just an auditorium up for hire. In fact, we're not up for hire. People apply, we program an interesting schedule, and then we create our own events as well. And it's all about creating a situation of exposure, for our audiences, for the theatre community, and trying to push quality, um, and of course develop both professional theatre and the audiences side by side. Theatre will always be something that people will go and see. You just have to be able to reach out to them and attract them. And that is, I think, a vital ro role of an auditorium, is to make a comfortable space where people feel it's theirs, they feel at home, it, they can create an adda, and I think that is essential to a successful uh, cultural space. As you put it, theatre will never die, and there are some people who know you very well, who marvel at the fact that you're still so passionate about theatre, about Prithvi, and how you do this day in and day out of attracting more people to theatre. Uh, someone who's seen you when you were that high, do you have any idea who I'm talking about? <laughs> oh gosh, you've been snooping around. Okay, let's take a look as <laughs> to who I'm talking about. I've known Sanjana since she was three. Obviously, she must have grown up right now. And if she has grown up, that means I have become older and older and older. Sanjana and her father and her brother are running this Prithvi theatres, which is a constantly losing proposition. <laughs> I don't know why they are doing it, but they are doing it. And obviously, it is a flip for youngsters. A lot of youngsters are taking advantage of this theatre and coming up with some very good work. He doesn't know why you're doing it, but you continue to do it. Well, that's always been, been Dubey's sort of cry. And actually, he's amazing. He's one of the people who've constantly been telling me um, to be more dictatorial. <laughs> I thought I was. <laughs> but he's been saying, do it your way and uh, be brutal. Uh, well, one does, one tries to, but it's... Um, one can't be so brutal or as brutal as one wishes because, as I said, there really is no other space for a lot of the groups to go and perform. And if there were, if we shared this burden, it is a burden of keeping 40 groups alive through the year. Uh, if we shared it with other venues across the city, then we could program more brutally. Well, I've seen a picture of you and your father, Shashiji, and you know the title on top of that picture. I think it was on, on one of the websites which said, which said uh, the dreamer and the doer. Oh, yeah. So your father is more like the godfather <laughs> and you're the efficient administrator. Oh my God. Yeah. That's very flattering. There's this junoon we all have in us. It's a bit of a genetic disorder, I think. We all, uh, my, my brother ran Prithvi for, for eight years, you know, Kunal after my mother passed away. And um, 
I mean, it's 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 a bizarre situation where one one can bang one's head against the wall because you find that oh God, you're so stuck and there's no. You actually lack oxygen sometimes because there's just nowhere you can see any help coming forward to make things happen. And some of it is financial, but it's not all financial. Um, it is financial is a big, 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 big problem. But I don't think that that's unsurmountable. I think that one of our greatest problems we face is is human resources. And luckily, I have somebody who I work with right now, my colleague again, Samira, who who believes that I'm completely wrong. So. And she's proving me wrong, which is exciting. So she's managing to train people and to get them on board. And I think that that's actually quite fascinating. It, we don't have a, a cadre of people who know how to manage a theater um, in our country. We have to train them, we have to develop them. But I believe that it is something that is, it's one of my now sort of new missions is to create this group of people. Um, well, I'm now going to ask Sanjana that one moment in her life, uh, let's call it the redefining moment, that one decision perhaps, that one phase in her life that changed everything for her. This is Sanjana's redefining moment. I guess one of the biggest turning points for me at Ritvi has been when we were to celebrate our 25th anniversary year, and that was five years ago. And that's a year, you know, 25, and it's a big number, and people think you've got to make a huge hoopla and tom-tom about it. And actually, for me, very, very personally, it was a very um, quiet moment of contemplation and uh, trying to really figure out where we, where we are, where we were at, uh, and a huge realization of isolation, of a feeling of... Uh, being out there very, very much alone, even though we, I could say Prithvi is a coveted space where people want to come to, but we don't really have a system in India where we are connected to what's going across, on across the country. So it was interesting because it then made me move into a sort of different uh, direction and things have born out, uh, have been born out of that. And so you struggled, there was a lot of struggle for you and you felt alone many times, but while going through that phase in your in your career in your journey you've left an impact on people people who remember you very very fondly and here is one such person Sanjana has been my actor and she's been uh, the manager and she's been audience she's done everything for me and I think uh, she was torturous <laughs> every bit of it but I should tell you that uh, Sanjana Makran Deshpande in theatre and uh, my work in theatre is because of Prithvi and Sanjana. Oh my and god! So I wouldn't see myself without Sanjana. Oh, that's horrible and soppy and I can't bear. She's been very dominating and very headstrong and she's been disciplined. And, uh, she wants me to be like that and it's been really difficult. But Whatever, I mean, she's been dynamic. She's done so much for kids, for, uh, I wouldn't say, uh, for regional theatre. It's very difficult uh, to have in Juhu, Marathi theatre happening, and then obviously the festivals, uh, which every year they manage to do it. What has happened is that Prithvi, in the times of electronic media, has still remained so energetic and alive in theatre is because of I think Sanjana. Oh. <laughs> Prithvi has been your mother's baby. How much of your mother is is inside you even today? Uh, yeah, well, well, I think that, that that's also something that I've questioned about myself as to, you know, where does all this come from? Why am I bothered about this, about this baby that won't grow up and leave home? I mean, it's tough, you know, and I was 10 when it opened, and it, well, I was 8 when they started talking about it, I guess, and uh, maybe it was just all these conversations I overheard asleep in the car or, you know, at home, and 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 so somewhere they, they, they filtered down into one's um, impulses, and I think so somewhere, somewhere there is, a, there are impulses that, that are there which uh, don't necessarily, they're not experiences that I've experienced. My mother, I was 
terrified when I started working at Prithvi. I know. Yeah, uh, I was. You were hesitant. You didn't uh, want to take up work at Prithvi. I mean, it's it a huge was responsibility. Perhaps. Completely. I mean, I was 16 when she passed away, and that's when Kunal started working there. And um, I was not going to have anything to do with it, uh, categorically. I lacked uh, worldly experience. I lacked theatre experience. I, 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 there was no way, and I didn't think that just because it was my mother's and father's that I needed to be there. So it took me a lot of other experiences and then I went when I actually did get to to go to school in in, uh, in New York and and work uh, a little bit as an actress that did give me the confidence to know that maybe I could work a little bit on a few projects so I came back and hesitantly said okay I watched plays for one year and I just I just observed what was going on and that's when I ventured into saying okay there's a five-point plan and let's see if I can do this